today. So let me start uh, with the, our idea. So I give some small introduction, maybe a big introduction, and and then we talk about our uh, robots that we use in the, the competitions, and then the robots that we are developing, and right now is in the field test for the your application, then I will conclude in short. So actually, uh, I supposed to bring uh, our lake robot here, but it's a little bit, uh, we have some problem about the, uh, the size and things and the people that who we handle. So in, in this case, I'd like to share you the designs part of the robot instead. So let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Chuck Green, uh, and I spent almost eight years in USA for my graduate study. I finished my PhD at Johns Hopkins, mostly in the uh, uh, theories, robot kinematics group theory. And during that time, so I had involved with a number of applications. Uh, Modular robots, surgical robotics, and some part of the mobile robots and so. And after return to Thailand, so I uh, actually I start up uh, start with the carbon mechanical engineering at my university, and then I group up teams and develop the system, uh, many robotic systems. Later on, we has been uh, appointed to, uh, to be the uh, center for biomedical and robotics technology that stands for the BART at BATLAB. And later on, I uh, with the friends, established the Department of Biomedical Engineering. That's the first and only department of biomedical engineering right now in Thailand. And within four years, with a very short time, we come up to be the, one of the top ranked uh, Department of Engineering in Thailand. So right now we have a very good student, pretty competitive students to join us. And I was with, uh, I'm working with the people in the Robotic Society in Thailand. And in 2008, 2011, I was a president. Right now it's not me, but I'm still active with them, working with the uh, RoboCup activities and right now uh, current interest is mean that money comes from where mostly it's come to the medical applications but we still stick with the rescue robots and other mobile robot applications. So let me tell you a little bit about Thailand. So we are here okay, on the whole world map. And our university is one of the oldest and largest. Uh, we are competing with another university, it's called Chulalongkorn University, we are top two university. And our university is medical oriented. So talk about my team labs. Actually for the whole center, we have five professors uh, working separately, uh, joining sometime. Mine is uh, called Badlab. Badlab is a robotics thing, it's original groups. And we have people working on the brain computer interface, rehabilitation, uh, computing, artificial organs. Right now we have four research staffs for my part, and I'm only six PhD, eight masters for just graduate. And we have facilities <coughs> about 500 square meters. And funding in the past, we uh, relatively to Thai research lab, we get a, quite a good uh, research funding. So this is how it looks. We have offices, we have machines, small machine shop. But later on, we try to whatever that the important parts, we will do the cats and send them out to fabricate uh, professionally. We do have so that the medical related have to simulate operation rooms, X-ray rooms, that kind of thing, yeah. So, I keep a little bit of the, uh, the, the feeling that what that we normally are doing, but 
how that relates to the skill of mouse. So actually, our current research that we are developing is uh, more like a delay surgery, uh, laparoscopic robots, and uh, virtual reality is helping surgical training. And actually, many things that uh, can be applied to uh, what that we are working on. Uh, rescue robots, especially it's for the, this is separate by itself, it's a training system, but actually it is a part that is a master delay control to the robots, which uh, requires uh, very sophisticated uh, motion movement. So here is actually right now where we, for the research, we uh, had a critical test and some, uh, once we really have to use our robot with the patients. So other applications, so you try to link whether the other application that we do is a cross internal mailing navigation system. So what it is, let me give a little bit. This is a femur bone and it is broken. So the surgeon will insert the nail and this nail we have to do the screw locking. So pretty much what the surgeon is doing, they're using a 2D X-ray image system, it's called fluoroscopic system. So we pretty much, we want to do the navigation for them. So we have to calibrate by uh, having these 2D images and they realize where exactly is the 3D uh, position orientation of the point that we want to do the surgeries and then uh, respond or send information back to a small robot that attached to the uh, system here and the robot will point out where and the surgeons to do the work. So pretty much that's how we also we need to depend on the uh, stereo cameras that to track the uh, X-ray imaging system and also the patients. So here is example of the works that we actually we are working on right now. So for other things like uh, like this, if you insert that, I don't know if you guys know the coronoscope, insert it to your body. So you want to know that where exactly or how the loop that is happening inside your body. So we using we are using the electro electro magnetic field tracking system that to track and show the loops. So many of these information, like this project, is actually is uh, I was one of our students here. He is the owner of the projects, and each other student can come from many other projects, and then we come and join and work together for the rescue robot. Why? At the very first time we start the rescue robots because the activities of the Thai Robotic Society is. And then we start with trying to uh, fit in what the requirements in the rescue robots that is in the lead robot. Like we, we know yellow, orange, red arenas, we know step fields, maze, manipulations, slow step, wireless communication. So it's come to, okay, so this is the arena, everyone, uh, our family, I believe. So to get through this that field, so we need a quite a strong robot and uh, it's supposed to be the, the mobility is supposed to be uh, very good. At the very first year that we start working on this robot, most robots in, not just only our robots, but most robots in the day, couldn't even get it to the first pilot of the red. And then we come up with uh, several iterations that uh, to design, especially for mechanical designs. And we always work back and forth into a lot of strength and also the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the power of the robots, how that is going to work, uh, how quick, and also whenever that uh, we start with the more power, so the robot is going to be heavier. So we try to um, optimize this part. And so this is a robot that we will talk about. But if you can see that what that we need, we want it 
to do the step climbing, the slope. Now we stick with the 45 degrees and so many, uh, and also manipulations, uh, the manipulators that we use here. Let's go into, right now the current uh, specification and the, this, from the, our concept designs for this is the robot that we use. Uh, we call the latest one is in for the link robot. This, we call tele op four. It's actually uh, for the series now. It's uh, like uh, the fourth iteration. But anyways, what that matters for design the robots, especially for mechanical designs, is the CG and <coughs> weight distribution. So in this robot, uh, we will have other slides to show in details uh, the speed. To, to running in the flat surface is about uh, 0.63 meter per second. For this one, it's quite fast. And for the models, uh, locations and stuff, <coughs> let's go to the next one. Okay. Uh, let me show this image. Okay. So the structures of our robots. So we try. This is after several iterations that we have been working on this robot. We found out, uh, we really uh, do a lot of the uh, cap, what is it called, the uh, analysis for the strength of these robots. We try to reduce out unnecessarily part of the robots and also uh, the structures. So what that we come out and to keep the strength is we pretty much we separate into the, like a modular part like this. So we have the wall that made of aluminum alloys <coughs> here. Underneath it's just a protection, so it's really thin uh, aluminum alloy sheet. And then we in between each wall here, we come up with the structures that we decide uh, it look like the X structures here. And we use this to keep the strength of it, so we will not change the, uh, in any direction in terms of the deformations here. And also the flippers here, what that we try to come up the best is we want it for independent uh, flippers. So we have to deal with the, how to insert the motors. So we come up with the motors that is, is not exactly perpendicular, uh, horizontal to the ground, but it's a little bit uh, in the angles here. And for each of these preppers, we want to have it to strongly stand at any position that we want during the time that we run into the rough terrains. So the selections of the uh, gear system, so that matters. So the main motors is here, it's quite large, very strong, fast. So we have to uh, put it down here uh, in parallel to the, uh, floor, uh, the floor here. And we are using the uh, right angle here, here, and based on our experience, so the frictions and everything can hold this steady in 45 degrees with this, uh, with this uh, weight by itself. So, so this is what I really like to uh, share about our experience and we believe uh, the strength of the robots here uh, just because of this wall, one, two, three, four, with the X structures that could hold this robot to not change the chair. Previously, we have been working on this robot and we found that uh, once in a while, maybe after run, really rough in that really rough terrain, especially in the arenas that we use for RoboCup, the robots require really high maintenance and replace many parts. But I could say that uh, from our previous version, tele-operation, uh, tele-op 3, we also have the same structures. For the trailer of four, we have been uh, 
extends into a water control system and also the more water capabilities. So this is the like to what that we like to share. So right here, if you can see, so we try to keep the robot on the ground as much as possible. And the city of robots, if it's go in the rear or in the back of robot, so you will not be able to climb up the stairway on the uh, 45 degree platforms easily. So pretty much CTs come a little bit forward in the front here. And battery is one part that is heavy. So we put it underneath uh, the tracks here and also it's easily to uh, do the maintenance. And also other parts we that's what we experience. Okay, in the back here we have some space that we can put electronics part, but we still think that this is a lizard robot. So we use a, a computer notebooks on top of this, so it's easily to access and uh, modify the software and stuff. And we design these structures that to hold the uh, what is it called the uh, antenna and stuff here. So, about the manipulators. So, our, our <coughs> manipulators that we design here is actually is more than 60 degree freedom. Sometimes, it really depends on our, our groups. Sometimes they modify at the risk and the, uh, the end effectors that they have extra degree freedom. But uh, mostly, we have one degree freedom here at the bottom, right here at that bit put in a front of the robot right here. So the CG is pretty come forward of robots. And then we have the worm gear here, back to here. We align the motors inside, use the transmission that we have inside here. And then another motors right here that drive the prismatic choice here. And uh, cameras or we can modify to be grippers and others we put here. This actually we have been built of the uh, manipulators for many versions and for this version is the one that we believe that because we have to have these uh, manipulators on our mobile robots which they are in the very rigorous uh, testing system or the uh, very rough terrain one. So the strength at the joint and the weight is actually is against each other. We want it strong, but we want to reduce the weight. So pretty much we reduce lots of weights and also reduce the, uh, the, the internal uh, components and also the, at the joint part. And we really do a lot of analysis on the strength, try to make it optimized as possible. So we remove all the part that is necessary, especially for the strength. Okay, so that is what that we done with our manipulators. So it's come out to be like what we have seen here, and is working very well in our testing uh, system. And if I remember correctly, once in Singapore at that time, uh, we were having what the uh, best mobilities. And at that time, I remember Raymond, you were using the pack box, right? Uh, Negotiator or pack box, right? Okay, in the best mobilities. So that, I think you got like 10 rounds of the, that eight infinities uh, tracks. And for our robot, without manipulators, I remember that we, we like uh, less for one and a half round, but you count only, uh, you don't count half round. So in that red arena from best mobilities, if I remember, remember correctly, so the uh, negotiators made 10, 10 laps and we made like eight and a half laps with the, without the manipulators. So we believe that our mobility is quite uh, strong here. 
And so talking about the other component that we believe is very important is about the tracks. <coughs> the tracks itself, when we very first design or old design similar to the tracks that we have here, so pretty much just a spread tracks. We cut out the lappers, put in this small piece of metal sheet, and then uh, tied it up with the chain, put in the uh, uh, track system. It worked okay, pretty well, very heavy. It's tracks alone, each side is about 10 kilograms. And then later on, we come up with uh, this by influence from Kimurax, Professor Kimurax uh, robot using a small uh, rubber pieces in the round chair. It worked very well in the red arena climbing step, but it's not good for climbing the slow, but really quick and make the grip very well for this type of where we do some analysis on the field cover a little bit. But anyway, that, that what I mentioned, we, our robot cannot climb up any the, uh, slope. And then later on, we come up with the other type that we are doing better. Instead of making pieces like this, we use the uh, industrial belt with the rubber kit like this. It's come out OK, but still, sometimes the uh, it's happened, it's a slip at the side whenever you uh, climb at the position that is not exactly in a straight position. So sometimes it's slip on the, on, on the side of the body. So right now, the current stage, we are using this system. We have custom made pieces of these uh, components for the, the rubber piece and that uh, come with the uh, screw and nut, and we put in this track. But anyway, this is one of our best design, and it can turn on the floor, and can grab, grip the uh, arenas and other testing pallets very well, but still the weight. So the, this one is the latest one that we have uh, developed. It is we use, uh, we do the design of the rubber using the industrial belt and then send it to custom made in the rubber companies to make it as a sort of the, look like a circular dot. And that is come out. I would say that uh, the performance is not as best as this one but it produces weight, about 20 kilograms for the robot. So that helps to very much also. And for this one here, once we found a problem with this kind, this type of the uh, floor, it's a metal uh, with the small slots here. So we have them be modified by cutting the edge here. So it's a problem. Okay, so other thing is, I think everyone has the sensors. We are using our sensor in a similar uh, way, on the encoders, ranging sensors. And if we talk about control, so mainly we have high level control is uh, one uh, computer on board. And this guy talk to the platform through the main locomotions. Uh, we have left and right uh, orders control system and it's low level control, it's position and speed control. And then we split the other part and to talk to four flippers, the work circle least. And for the manipulators, we talk to the master and then split into all the free freedoms of robots, uh, of waters control, and then receive back and forth the uh, vital size sensors, navigation sensors, and all everything is really depends 
sometimes my student let it calculate here on board. Sometimes I just bring it out. So I don't know what right now what are they doing, but sometimes it's working on board, sometimes it's working at the station and send out the command here. And at the station we try to uh, develop the how it looked and understandable and make it easy to use robots. Okay, let me show about the video a little bit. So, so my student prepared a video for me, so please have a look. This is still in the narration time for the competitions. Yes. We normally we previously we, we didn't attend the Thai uh, Thai competitions for a few years already so after we get the championship. So we kinda uh, away <coughs> the team to come back. And but we keep working and going to Japan so then we gain experience and stuff. This is how the uh, our control system is. This is in the Japan Open. This is in the, uh, some opening ceremony for the uh, first round. And then let's go about something. Uh, some effect on too much smoke. Okay. It's like something where it's not. This one is from Singapore that we do the test and stuff. This is a testing that we are trying to do in the slalom. in Japan open, that's Jato Jews. And the floor they also have the, some other material that is <coughs> moving all the time, so it's really, really uh, kind of difficult to go through. So our robot, the speed, it doesn't matter here. Actually, the arena is very really small. And they also have this thing that whenever our robot get it to have to come curve, down here and they put the uh, victim styles there. And actually it's really flimsy, ready to collapse. And this is a wood test that, uh, the wood bridge that we, uh, I mentioned to uh, uh, Adam so so that the first year we tear down everything. And, but this is like the, this year. So it's all about the speed and how you control the robot. So now the wood's still there. Pretty much the video here. Okay, so come to the uh, requirement that uh, we are going to uh, we develop the our robots. So actually, in Thailand, we don't have that such disaster like earthquakes or uh, any other things like collapse buildings. We really long time, once in a while, we have the big disaster ones like uh, tsunami in 2004. Other disaster in Thailand is more like the flooding. So, but in the border, southern border of Thailand, we have a little bit of the uh, terrorist activities going on. But what I can tell you that is uh, it's just only happened in a specific area, very far away from the Bangkok or any other uh, visiting places. So, what that we try to help them is we work with the uh, Navy EOD team. So that we come out with the bomb squad robot, and 
what being happy and working together. So they like to have the robots that do some under uh, vehicle searchings and look through the windows, that type of things, not to uh, create a bomb and come up with uh, some description a little bit that is supposed to work for like 100 meter operation distance uh, and very simple terrains like uh, running in the, on the roads, climbing the pavements, some stairway and ease of use of methods. And especially uh, one the other thing is the robust robustness. It needs to be robust and we are thinking that they will do really low, really low maintenance. They cannot fix anything. And pretty much the user, the one who control the robots and use robot, uh, they may be the, uh, <coughs> let's say that the, not the commanders or someone, but pretty much the UD team, which uh, they want it to be very easy and simple you know, the usage. So we come up with the conceptual design that we want something flat, thin, uh, pretty, really, the height is very low, CG is low, we are distributed similar, but we make it uh, to be more robust by reduce the independent creepers to become just only uh, front flippers, which dividend, okay, and the speed uh, we design is about uh, 30 meter per minute. So the robot come in very simple. So we use the track system, the flippers here, the track itself transfer, uh, transmit the powers to the uh, Flippers tracks here. So we align all the motors in the centers with more forwards here. Two main drive motors is here in parallel. Use a right anchor uh, gear system and one motor only through the control uh, to the uh, transmission locks here. And then use the work here to control the, the flippers. So symmetry is really matter for mobile robots. And so these robots actually, is, uh, the platform itself works separately. And we designed uh, uh, detachable, attachable manipulators that attach on top of this thing and it works separately. And the robot itself has a camera, two or three cameras. Uh, one is looking up, the other one is on the front in the front. And yeah, that pretty much the design. And <coughs> once it comes up, so it's gonna look like this. We have cover here. And actually one other thing is that we have to concern is in the area that the robot is working, it's pretty much a lot of raining, like 60, 70 percent raining the whole time because it's close to uh, the equators or near to the Malaysia's border. So we have to consider about the covers that how that we can work under the, some raining but not like really strong rains and how to uh, take care of all the electronics part, how that is covers, how that is in a nicely uh, containers, that type of thing. And also, even the mechanical parts, we also have to concern about having the plastic or something that to cover. And this robot, actually, okay, inside <coughs> is based on the structures in a similar way, modular X structures, flippers, like I mentioned. So, so this is in general that I already mentioned here. We have the large space area here for the batteries. Batteries to side, electronics in the back, and uh, the motors and driving system with one. And also, this is the belt or the uh, tracks. 
uh, tension adjusters we have in the back here for the whole driving system in the front here. So we hope that uh, the tracks that we are using is sometime once uh, once uh, in a really long time it may be expanded. So we can still use it and adjust it. So that come up, this is the platform and the manipulator is actually we uh, lead resizes and put more strength on the uh, manipulators that can do some works and grab something, carry and bring the back, uh, bring the stuff away. Because uh, what that the EOD team talk to us, they, uh, they like to move the suspects, suspicious uh, package out from the somewhere that is nearby the building or something and grab it back uh, out to the open space <coughs> which I talked to Martin, Martin says no, don't do that uh, but it's really, uh, that's a requirement that we received from the, uh, the EOD team Thailand so about the controllers uh, the control stations, we, so we redesigned not to uh, have everything in one pack of the suitcase and labeled nice Thai words right here for the, uh, the soldiers so they can use easily and remove all the buttons and things uh, just only really uh, small numbers of the buttons and the control using the joystick style yeah, everything is portable, waterproof, and battery is inside, can work by itself. Except that we test with our uh, RoboCup facilities what the test, the practical test that we are trying to do. Uh, we are trying to mimic the practical, uh, what we call practical testing. We try to mimic the way that the uh, the EOD teams they use. They said they will set the control station maybe a hundred meters away from the the, uh, the problems areas, and then they will set send this robot get in and take a look and come back, and then get some tools maybe the wrist structure or something, put on the robots and go there and do the work, and so then come back. So what we trying to do is the doing a lot of the 100 meter running tests. So first test that we did is we set the space, uh, the open outdoor space. It's like actually it's a uh, small road in the campus and then red robot runs for 100 meters at the almost top speed. And then going back and forth for cycles, many cycles, and then see the battery, also see the battery time durations. So right now for our robots, for just run back and forth 100 meters for 20 cycles per series, we can complete three series in one and a half hours, so that battery is can hold for one and a half hours. And speed is quite good, steady is about 0.45 meters per second. And at the very last series, so it's come down, finally the battery is out. That's one of the first tests that we did. And we did a little bit of the, this is a standard stair, uh, step of the stairway in the building. So we climb up, down, and try to get the very good speed and average, like five steps here. It's like 13 seconds to the top. Why we do this too? Because we want to combine into like the series test here. So what is the series test? We try to mimic how the EOD loops works by run 100 meters full speed, climb up the stairways, and do some searching for like 10 minutes, come down the stairways, come back to the station. And we keep doing like this, uh, three cycles per set, and we can complete like three sets and duration time is like 25 minutes and that is actually exceed that what the EOD teams will require us like three times and so we keep 
doing such tests for many times and uh, make sure that it's robust. And other things, and actually, here is just only the robot the platform. Come to next, we do the series of tests, the second test series, 100 meters, run up stairway, searching 10 minutes, come back down, 100 meters back, set up the manipulators, go 100 meters again, run up the stairway, searching 10 minutes, climb back down, 100 meters back to the station. And we do this uh, two cycles to complete. Uh, we completed two cycles, and that the duration time is about 50 minutes. So here is what that we repeat, keep repeat doing it before we send out our robots to the navies. So this is the specification come up. So the robot itself, the platform alone, the height is under 15 centimeters, so it can slip underneath the, uh, the vehicles or the cars. It's fine. They don't care about the length, but they care about the width of the robots. This is a requirement. So we have quite a very narrow one, it's 45 centimeters. Once we attach the manipulators, the height, the maximum height that the uh, manipulators can look into the windows of the cars, something is 1.5 meters. And the total weight is about 30 something kilograms, including the manipulators and the speed come up to be 0.45 meters per six. And so actually the communication is can cover like almost 100 meters or 100 meters, but we, we keep it safe, it's like at the 25 meters. We have cameras, wine go in the front and the manipulator itself is 8.5 kilograms length of the manipulator itself is 1.3 meter and at the full extension the manipulators can hold like 2 kilograms of payload so the robot has been sent to the southern part of Thailand yeah but we didn't go there, it's actually it's kind of a little bit sensitive, dangerous area, so they have our robots working with the, uh, the Navy down there. But I, 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 I believe this is like to demonstrate the, the pictures from the demonstrations for the, uh, the group of the uh, media and stuff. So our robots we work with the teams, EOD teams there, and we are getting the information back, and I hope that. Uh, we will get the reports and what's going on because we also make the manuals and also reports that give to them and if they can help us to work together because the user there they are not researchers so but anyway we have some very easy reports for them that if they can um, give us the feedback so we can improve our fine tune so our robots here and we hope that uh, the research and development department of the Navy that we work together uh, and us we can develop the uh, next robots maybe the best uh, produce for such robot for the high uh, military and that pretty much that I mentioned uh, to tell you guys about our stories uh, this is some of our teams not all, all right thank you very much Servo motors. Servo motors? Uh, actually, yeah, that's what I always fight with my students. They like servo motors, but they don't trust servo motors. Even though right now there are many big, uh, good companies that they make really strong materials inside. The very latest one is really strong, I believe so, but uh, we still 
Uh, at, at least it's about trust. And we need a little, mm -hmm. really good reliability and robustness. And if we can do, uh, because the structure itself, actually uh, you can design, the mechanical design to help for the, the loads and everything, and motor just to drive. So in that case, we have the uh, motor drive, and we have the motor control system, so we can use DCs as easier. I mean, not easier, but... Not easier to control, is, but... Yes, but it's robust. Uh, you and haven't that, tried these servos at all? Oh, we try. We, yeah, they broke like a lot of them because of the sometimes, and you know, in the rough terrains, you're moving really quick sometimes, you grab stuff. It's not robust. I, I don't trust them much. I, I, for myself, some of them, they like it. They like them. <laughs> I guess you have your own encoders and you have your own mode of control circuitry, right? So yes. you're, you're effectively building your own servo into your robot. Yes, yes. Actually, yes, I, I didn't mention about that. So those circuits and many things, yeah, our students are developing them. All designed by you? Yes, yes. So water drive, yeah, last night they changed water drive. <laughs> they, they brought my robots, but normally, uh, this is also the small, small, small tips for like you go for the World Cup competitions. Uh, readiness and the prepare, preparation is good. Right now, when they come here, they don't have good preparations, but at least it's okay in one level. They brought a lot of parts, like yeah, they have four, what is it called? Motor drive boards, right? And four controller boards. Motors actually, they they practically can build another robot. Yeah. yeah but but that's something in the case that something wrong and right? something went wrong. <laughs> we always do. All right. Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask. I mean, how how much uh, is your robot? I mean, you're planning on commercializing it. Yes. So, will you also try to like compete with I don't know iRobot or? Uh, the compete in terms of the abilities. I mean, the, the, uh, in terms of the like how that iRobot can do, we can. That, that's what we try. Yeah. But in terms of the, I don't think we can. Uh, the price, of course, I believe we can make it maybe half of the iRobots or something. And maybe, but actually, it's, yeah, we are having plans to do the commercialize very soon. And for the, at least for the research or military status, you know, the groups that we are working on, we have some contract together for, for the cost and stuff. Yeah. We will do it. Please. So, um, notice the rear flippers did make it out to the deployable robot. Is that just because the bombs caused the tongue and they didn't need advanced mobility? Uh, one of the themes that we're trying to do is we, <coughs> we don't want to add fancy stuff in the something that in the real is. If it, they don't need it, if you put on that may make the problems such as Okay, something is wrong, whatever. But the the robot set for the military is, is a little bit longer, and we did the test and designs and everything that we can do uh, in general, uh, like a working surface is fine, and we don't need the flipper in the back. But that is actually our plan. Yes, that one. Is for military use. That simple, that simple uh, mobilities. But anyway, we still we will stick with the four flippers for the commercial one also. Four flipper with in uh, independent flippers motions. But you you know if you add more movement and motions, you add more weak weakness point, a weak point. So you need more maintenance that kind of thing. And the point that we sent that robot down there for the replies, we at the beginning we tried to debate about the independent 
flippers, motions, but reduce one um, deal of degree of freedom. But actually, we also reduce a big part of problem. Maybe they have the problem in transmission or whatever. So that we keep it simple as possible. That, that what we are thinking. Yes. And reasonable accommodation, but I would hope that you have plans to try to put because that's one of the signature yes. achievements yes. that came out of Thailand. Yes. So compared to uh, mobility speed, the others lead robot in terms of the uh, RoboCup Arena test. Uh, maybe and not compared to others. But actually, what we gain from the uh, military robot here is how to reduce the weights and size. That's what we believe that newer version, maybe, okay, maybe we can come up with the prototype, maybe we will bring it to Netherlands or something. That maybe is uh, much smaller and lighter than the previous version here. Maybe we can see what's going on with the four preferences. Any more questions? Otherwise, okay, thank you very much, everyone.